Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and I want you to spend the next wee while with us. My daughter Melody is here with me in the studio, and we're going to be sharing some great news from Moldova. And I think I've got a word of the Lord and a wee video clip from Ireland. I'm not Irish, but this one is from Ireland. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I'm so glad you joined us today here on Daily Faith. in the westerly part of Ireland right now and we've taken a detour off this road it was even paved and we came upon a, a wee harbor and this boat is called the Aran Lass. Aran is an island just off the coast and whenever I saw it I'm from a fishing town in Scotland whenever I saw it I kind of felt sad because its best days are behind it the planks are all worn and yet I can see the greens and the blues and the reds that this boat had been painted so proudly. Its destiny is not to sit here supported by some tubes and tires when 50 feet in that direction is the sea. There are some times where you get misdirected and your destiny is missed. This incredible, beautiful, old, I'd say well over a hundred year old boat was painstakingly made to be in the water and time and neglect and storms have robbed it of its destiny and is sitting here 50 feet away from where it was meant to be. You have a destiny that is imprinted upon you by heaven. It's a, D a DNA, a spiritual DNA that God places in you that no one and no circumstance can change. But sometimes a storm comes and neglect comes and abuse comes and pain and heartache comes and the devil can get you out of where your destiny has called you to be. And this is where you end up. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you'll get back in the game, that you'll get back in the water, you'll get back to your destiny. You have been called and chosen and appointed for a purpose. And it isn't to sit here like this, the Aaron Lass, 50 feet away from destiny. You are called to sail the seas of heaven and the power and might of his strength working through you. Come on, let's get back in the harbor. That's where we're meant to be. Wow, that was an enjoyable day. And we, we, that was so far, that was so remote in the west of Ireland that there was just a dirt track to it. Wow. And uh, we're driving along in our car and I saw this, this little path. And I said to Andrew, I said, can we get down there, Andrew? He says, yeah, we'll try. It's a rental car. <laughs> and we, we went down this road and found this boat, the Aaron Lass, sitting there all by herself, just, just forgotten, slowly time. I'm sure she was put there for good intention that we'll, re, we'll refix it. And uh, time and the elements were causing damage to it. When I was a boy back in Scotland, I bought a boat. It was a 1912 clinker built lifeboat off a metal ship, a, an iron vessel from England. And um, I called it the geese piece, which is, means give me peace in Scot Scottish, give, give geese peace. That's how you, if you say to someone, just give me peace, Ge geese piece. And it, it was in terrible condition. And um, the boards were, were open and it leaked like a sieve and we took it out of the water and I scraped the whole thing down with a blowtorch and a, and a scraping thing and we took all the old paint right down to the wood, sanded the wood 
and got some, I forget what they call it, but it was like, it's like wool, but it's thick and it's oily and you, you, you poke it in all the crevices as tight as anything. And then we repainted the whole thing and take, took it, got a crane to put it back. It was 24 foot long. Do you remember that boat? No? No, I, I don't. Oh, actually. my gracious me. I almost died in that boat. <laughs> That's another story all by itself. And uh, we finally took it down to the harbor in Bottom in Scotland. And a crane came and put it in the water, and it sank immediately. It just went right under the water. I thought, oh, my goodness. So I jumped down off the pier into the boat, and I, I had a hand pump and um, also a, a little motor pump that worked off the battery. And I switched that thing on real fast, and I pumped, and I sp spent the entire night in that boat, freezing I think, cold. I think pump we found a story that I haven't heard before. Well, you this see, is the first time I've heard this. Uh, see, uh, she uh -huh. thinks she thinks she's heard every story <laughs> I've ever heard. I lived. have not heard every story. Well, here's this the geese good one. story. I like this one. And so I pumped that mm -hmm. thing out all night, like to freeze to death. And what happened was, and we we kept changing the battery out because the engine had gone under the water a bit as well. My 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 father had to fix that, but we managed. What happened was when the when the water the the, the planks got wet again, they swelled. Uh -huh. And it swelled back tight, and it was okay. And uh, I had I had incredible times in that boat. One wow. particular time I'll remember, I went out and it was a nice day. And in Scotland, you can you can leave the harbour on a nice day, and come home um, in a storm. And that's exactly what happened. I got stuck all by myself. I was going through a tough time. My dad had, had got sick, and and the ministry weight and responsibility was being transferred onto me. And that's what was called geese peace, give me peace. That was my only place I could go away. And I, I went out one day in the, in the harbor, out of the harbor into the North Sea. And I was out far enough that you could barely see land. And uh, suddenly I noticed, oh my goodness, there's a storm coming. And I put that boat as fast as it would go. And it was just an old boat that just chugged along. And by the time I got to the harbor, within sight of the harbor, I mean, the waves were literally up nearly over the over the breakwater and I was punching through this store and the waves were coming over the top I was drenched in my skin and um, I finally there, I got to, into the lee of the land and then got into bottom harbor and when I turned to go into the harbor which is going to offset from the, the open seas out here and in the harbors you go around this corner and I, I got in and my dad was standing up on the top of this pier and unknown to me, he'd watched me for two hours in the storm trying to get home. And he watched, and I was battling with an underpowered engine in an old hundred-year-old boat, desperately trying to get home through the storm. And I was so caught up with the, the next wave that would hit me and trying not to roll me. And, and I mean, you can't... You can't believe the storms that we have in the North Sea, one of the cruelest waters in the world. And it's shallow, and when a storm comes, it, it stirs very quickly. And uh, I'll never forget me turning the corner into the harbor, in, into calm. And my dad got off that pier and came down to the dock where I was tying my boat up. And I'm telling, telling you something, he blessed me out <laughs> every which way. <laughs> I thought, oh my Lord. And we had church that night. And my face was blood red with wind burn. I'd been out in the storm. And uh, I was never so glad to get my feet on dry land. What I'm telling you is this. You may be battered in a storm right now. The waves of adversity might be sinking you and you think, my God, I'll never make it through. I'm here to tell you something. There's a father watching you waiting and making sure that your ship gets home. And that's where that song, There's a Lighthouse on the Hillside, that was right beside the lighthouse in our hometown in Scotland. So I want to tell you, you're destined for the sea. You're not destined for dry dock. Don't let the storms of yesterday stop you from launching out again into your future because God is on your side. And I just told a story that my daughter had never heard before, and I am so pleased with myself. Watch this video. I'll be back in a moment. Full House.
It's Time for Household Salvation will help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. I need you to get this book today. It will change how you see the possibility of your family getting saved. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how impossible it seems. The closer my dad got to getting saved, the worse he became, the more violent he became, the more abusive he became. My mother started out saying, God, give me grace to live with this man for another month. And after a while, she says, God, give me grace for two more weeks. Just let me stand and tolerate for two more weeks because he was getting worse and worse. He would, she would go down to a week and then every morning she would say, when he went to his work, oh God, please, just let me live, tolerate him one more day. He came home from work for lunch, had a big fight with her about this Jesus that had ruined his life of sin that he had planned. Wasn't keen on us kids either, to be quite frank with you. And she left, he left rather, and she got down on her knees and she says, Jesus, I can't take him anymore. I can't carry him anymore. I can't deal with this anymore. Two o'clock in the afternoon, he was putting a piece of wood into a 30-inch saw. Looked up at the clock. It was two o'clock, half covered in sawdust. And as he put this piece of wood into the saw, he began to shake. And he shook off and he tried to, he started to cry and he shook himself and tried to get the saw, the wood lined up again. And his brother John, who had been saved, this was the family business, walked past and said, Simon, what you doing? And he says, I done I can. I don't, I don't know. I done I can. And he says, what's wrong with you, Simon? I done I can, John. I done I can. I don't know. I don't know. And he said, well, get off that saw. You'll cut your hands off. And my dad collapsed. And my Uncle John lifted him, carried him up to the wee office in, this, in the sawmill. And uh, my, my mom, my, my grandmother came. They sent for his mom. And my grandma came and says, what's wrong with you, Simon? I done I can. I done I can. And they sent for Wendy. And they put him in a car and drove him up to a wooden shack he was staying in, 12 by 6 wooden shack. And they left him, and, and my mother could hardly bear to stand to look at him, to be honest with you. And he came in, and there was a single bed that was also a sofa where they slept, and, and a single bed when you're fighting with someone's not a very good place to be. And uh, he, she says, what's wrong with you, Simon? And out of my father's mouth came these words, Wendy, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. And God broke into him when she couldn't carry him another day. She thought he was kidding. Every morning he'd wake up and he'd put his hands up and thank, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And my, my mom thought he was playing a joke on her. Well, it wasn't. He became a crazy preacher. The first Sunday he was in church. He said, Pastor, let me testify. And then Sunday night, he says, Pastor, let me testify. Wednesday night, the pastor, let me testify. Prayer meeting, let me testify. Saturday night, let me testify. And the pastor said, Simon, you're going to have spiritual indigestion if you keep doing this. Well, he died, oh, years later, with all his sails blazing, going towards heaven. Last time I saw him, I flew home from Scotland, walked into his hospital room. The first thing he said was, what's happening in Moldova with my kids? I'm doing what I do in Moldova and Romania and Ukraine because Simon Cameron, the alcoholic that got saved, had such a passion for the lost that he poured that passion into me and I'm pouring into her. One day I won't be here and she will be. She'll be sitting in this seat doing these TV programs and I'll be in heaven rejoicing saying, Dad, look, I got them all mixed up just like you did me. You can be a part of this miracle. Household salvation is your part. Watch this video. 
Moldova is the poorest country in all of Europe. If you live two miles outside the city, there are no streets, no sidewalks. There is grinding, soul-destroying poverty. This compression of poverty breaks spirits and hearts. When a family breaks, usually a parent will go abroad for a job and leave the kids behind with all kinds of promises. And they just don't come back. This causes orphans, abandoned kids, and those kids are warehoused in orphanages. No one cares about them. Every day, they are told things like, nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Your mother doesn't want you. Your father doesn't want you. We don't want you. Every piece of paper they have is stamped orphan, a stigma that goes with them throughout their lives. At 16, they graduate, they age out of the orphanage, given a few dollars and a bus ticket to whatever name of town is on their birth certificate, and they're sent away. Many end up in a bus station, and a car drives up, and a man steps out and says, looking for a place to go, looking for a job. I have an uncle in Italy, and we're looking for waitresses. We'll pay your ticket there, we'll help you get there. And a wee girl that has no experience, painfully naive, gets in the back of a car. Within 24 hours of getting in that car, she is taken away and raped and beaten mercilessly. They use them 30 to 50 times a day until there's nothing left. The orphan's hands has managed to break that cycle. They come to us with the clothes on their back. Many have never had any dreams of going to school or any hope of living a normal life, marked forever because they're an orphan. And we take them in and we give them their own bed and their own clothes. We enroll them in a good school and suddenly despair begins to turn to hope. The only way for me to survive, it was to put me in a hospital for children which are sick with tuberculosis. And um, I stayed there for 10 years. So I wasn't sick, I was a normal child. I didn't have any problems with my health. But it was the only place that could receive these little babies like me. For 10 years, I didn't know that I have a family. And I didn't even know my real name. After I finished the orphanage, um, I didn't know where to go. After a few months, I met the, family, uh, the Cameron family, and um, they changed my life. I'm very thankful that uh, God found me. Though I didn't know my real name when I was in the hospital, um, my God chose me and knew before I was born, and he had a plan with me before I was born. And thank you for being a part of my life because of you. Now I have this opportunity to speak for those that are still in these difficult periods like I, am, I was. And because of you, now I have a voice to speak about those that are lost now. You have incredible power right now. You have the power of life and death in the yes of your heart, in the stretch of your hand, to allow a young girl who tonight is absolutely lost, who today sits with no hope, to lift them out of darkness and say to them, we love you and we care for you because God does. And we will stand with you through the storm until the new day comes. And that is what we do. We stand with them through the storm. The girl that spoke is called Ulizana. Her father comes from Kyrgyzstan. She's never met him. Her mother was a Moldovan from a very wealthy family who went to Moscow to study. Met this man from Kyrgyzstan and went 
all the way, you need to look on the map where Kyrgyzstan is, is beside Pakistan. While there, she had three babies. Her husband began to beat her. She was pregnant with Ulizana and ran for her life back to Moldova and was so poor that she had nothing. In fact, Ulizana said, we didn't have a food. We didn't even have a table for the food. And when Ulizana was born, she put her because there was nowhere else to put her except a tuberculosis hospital. And Ulizana, her name in the orphanage, they called her Christina. She didn't know her name was Ulizana. And for 10 years, her mother never came to see her. She lived completely alone. She never left the orphanage. She never went out to people's houses. She never saw a home. She never saw a kitchen. She was only in an institution. Because she's Asian in her appearance from, when she, from her father's background, they all called her ugly. The teachers called her ugly. All the kids called her ugly. They wouldn't make friends with her. She spent 10 years of her life alone, Christmas time, in the orphanage by herself. The kids with TB got home for a few days and she was sitting in this huge building. You saw the buildings all by herself, a little orphan girl that no one cared about. One day, a European woman came up to her in the orphanage and said, I'm your mother. She'd never seen her before. And she says, do you know that you have a family? You have three more sisters? And Ulizan has, has told me so many times, it was the dream of my, she says, I never asked God for a Barbie. I just asked God for a family. And the mother says, would you want to see your family? And she says, please. And the mother took her out of the tuberculosis hospital, went across town and dropped her off in an orphanage. When she met the teachers that enrolled her in the orphanage, they looked at her paperwork and says, your name is not Christina, your name is Ulizana. So she lost the only name she had in one day. She met our sisters. And the first thing our sisters said was, stay away from your mother because she's mentally insane. She'll hurt you and harm you. And every time her mom would come, Ulizana would have to hide in her wardrobe away from her mom. So she found a mom and lost her mom in a day. She lost a name she knew and found a strange sounding name, Ulizana in one day. And her sisters that were older than she were in a part of the orphanage that she never ever saw them. At 16, she went to a camp run by Christians and she heard the gospel and gave her heart to Jesus. And she had nowhere to go. And she came to my house in Moldova. And Chrissy and I and some of the kids, were you there that night, Mel? We sat and talked with this angry little girl, mad. I will never call a man father. I will never do this and I never, I, and she, for two hours I fought with her. And she was just angry. And I says, look, I can't help you. I'm so sorry. There's nothing I can do for you. And she started to cry. And she says, I have nowhere else to go. And that night, Ulazana joined our family. She is the most anointed young girl I've ever met. She is unbelievably anointed. Her spirit is huge. And she calls me dad and my wife, Chrissy, mom. And she sent me pictures yesterday on my iPhone she sent me pictures. Her mother is now in an institution, a mental institution. And yesterday she sent me pictures that she'd gone to the institution. Her mother throws stones at her when she sees her. And she went and she got her mom to accept an icicle, an ice cream. And she brought enough. And she and her mom went round the different wards, the rooms in this mental institution and gave out ice cream. And Ulizana wrote me yesterday, thrilled out of her mind because she brought her mom an ice cream. That's what the orphan's hands do. We need your help so desperately. We have homes that need supporting. Every home costs 120 people giving $30 a month. If I can find 120 people, we can open another house for these kids to live in. 
And I know you're someone that God can speak to the, your heart right now. You are one of that 120. If I were to let you meet Ulizana, and I could say to you, listen, we could reach more Ulizanas for, for $30 a day. Uh, sorry, yes, $30 a month. You would say, sure, I can, I can give a dollar a day. I can give $30 a month. Well, that's exactly what I'm asking you to do. I could repeat that story over and over and over again. The number's on your screen. 833-DAILY-FAITH or 833-324-5932. You're giving right now will allow us to reach into someone else's life and give them hope. You have never been more important than you are for the kingdom of God. Do something magnificent today. Through the storm, reach out to someone else and God will bring back victory into your life. God bless you. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They championed the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1 833 Daily Faith or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron Post Office Box 242246 Montgomery Alabama 36124